Today I'm going to show you how to forge out the blade of a classic colonial spatula. I'm only going to be doing the blade today because this is part of a four-piece fireplace cookware set that I'm working on and the handle is going to be identical to what I did for the basic fork video. The blade for this spatula is going to be made out of a quarter by inch and a half piece of flat bar and I'm going to be welding that to a piece of 3 8 square bar, the same material that I used for the basic fork video. I'm going to be using a curved chisel to cut out notches on the sides of each bar and that's just going to give me an area that I can transition into a scarf for the weld. If you don't feel confident about forge welding the handle to the blade, don't worry about it. You can just forge the handle with a flat spot and rivet the two pieces together. But the process of forging out the blade remains the same. Also, I'm using a curved chisel because I have it and it does make a nicer transition into that scarf. But if you just want to use a straight chisel and cut two 45s on each side of the bar, the it wouldn't really affect the process that much. To join the blade to the handle I'm going to be using what's called a cleft weld and that's basically a weld where the handle material is split open and wrapped around the blade material. Basically the same way you would if you were to grab a piece of metal. Your thumb would be on one side and your fingers would be on the other. That's a cleft weld. So to set that up I need to forge a very thin wedge shaped transition on the end of this bar that's going to fit inside that forked piece that I'm going to be splitting out. It's kind of a weld that isn't used much today but when you examine old ironwork you see that it was really used quite extensively and one of the reasons I like using it is because it just gives me a simple way of holding these two pieces together without riveting them together or without doing a drop tong weld where I have to take the two separate pieces out of the fire and join them up on the anvil. They stay as one piece in the fire, I pull them out and they get welded as one piece without any complications. So here I've just been spending a few seconds trying to figure out how I'm going to lay this on the anvil in order to be able to cut this to length, you know, which marking I'm going to use on this ruler. So I've decided to just position the top shoulder of the bar at the end of the ruler and then count back four and a half inches which puts the mark fairly close to the center of the anvil which makes it easy to figure out. I'm placing a chalk mark on the metal because from here it's going back in the fire and I want to make sure that that part is in the hottest spot of the fire. It'll be gone of course when I bring it back to the anvil that's why I need the ruler to let me know where that mark is. Now I'm prepping the handle for the weld by forging a pretty blunt point to the bar. This is an optional part of the process. All this is doing is just pre-shaping the end of the bar so you have a little bit less forging to do when you have this cleft split open and you're refining the ends. As you'll see in a moment this can easily all have been done as one process after I split it open so it's up to you how you want to go about it. I'm sorry about the shaky video but the ground's still frozen here so the vibrations from the anvil are traveling right up the tripod and affecting the focus. But this is just a basic split. It doesn't have to be that pretty or that even for that matter. It's all going to get forged into one piece eventually anyway and hopefully it'll be invisible. The important thing is to have very thin edges at the tip of the cleft weld so that it blends very easily and evenly into the blade material.
And you can see here how the two pieces are going to be fitted together. To finish setting up the weld, I need to forge the end of the handle tightly around the blade material. So I'm driving the blade back into the handle so it fits very tightly into the bottom of the notch. And then I'm going to forge the two sides of the split up against the blade so that it's as tight as possible. Here I'm driving the two pieces together and the fork part of the handle is acting like an old style clothespin and holding everything together until I can get it into the fire. Now you have to understand that this clamping pressure that's holding the handle onto the blade right now is only there because everything is cold. Once I heat this up, I'm going to lose that and the pieces are going to fall apart. So once I get it into fire, it stays there. I don't move it. So to apply the flux for the weld, I don't heat it up to a red heat. I just set this on top of the fire and let it heat up just enough to melt the flux. So it's still at a black heat. Everything's being held together as a unit and I can still move it around. Once the flux is hardened, that also helps to hold everything together. So at this point, I can shove it into the fire and get it ready for a welding heat. So it's a few minutes later, I have a welding heat. And now you finally get to see the point of all this. If I had to take these two separate pieces out of the fire and weld them conventionally by trying to lap them on the anvil, and doing a conventional what's called a drop tong weld, I would probably have a one in three chance of getting it done. But because I'm using a cleft weld, I can do this and actually set the weld in the fire. And now I can take the piece out as a unit and go straight over to the anvil and finish the weld. I wouldn't normally be shaking it around like this. I'm just trying to show you that the piece is set and I can treat it as a unit and not have to worry about the two pieces falling apart. So by taking a little bit of extra time to set up the weld, I can increase my success rate dramatically for getting this weld together. And here you would just proceed as you normally would and use as many heats as you need to blend the two pieces together. Now I'm ready to start shaping the blade. The first thing that you need to do is create an offset that's going to divide the upper part of the blade from the lower section of the blade. This offset starts with a fairly sharp transition towards the handle end of the blade and the blade portion is actually forged out into a wedge shape which is later going to be forged into the blade of the spatula. So because I forged the stock out so that it has a section that has a full thickness piece of material followed by a thin piece of material that gradually goes back up into a full thickness piece of material, that is naturally just going to start giving me that keyhole shape when I start fullering it out. Now I'm ready to start fullering out the blade of the spatula. I want the handle material to gradually transition into the blade, so I'm going to stay away from this area and make sure that I don't create too sharp of a drop in thickness at that point. So I'm going to fuller everything around it and create the shape that way.
So here I'm about 10 or 15 heats down the road and I've substituted 45 minutes of hammering with about 5 minutes of grinding with the flap wheel to roughly define the shape. And now I'm going to be taking a series of very low temperature heats just to knock off the scale and put the final hammer texture onto the piece. So here's the finished spatula and you would also use the same process for joining the handle to the blank that you would need to make a large ladle. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel and you can spare $2.50 every month, click on the Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. I'd really like to be able to expand the content of this channel and turn it into the best resource for anyone wanting to learn traditional crafts, but I need your help to get there. Thank you.